Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism, bringing you the latest news highlights of the hour. I am Tabitha John. To stay with us, the headlines. A historian says Ethiopian loss of access to sea outlet, shocking story. And Ethiopia and China express commitment to cement comprehensive strategic partnership. Addis Ababa has been selected as a place where other countries can learn from at the first ever global summit of School Meals Coalition, which was held in Paris, France. The city of six million, which also serves as the, dip as the diplomatic capital of Africa, has shared its success story in implementing the school feeding program over the past few years at the School Meals Coalition first global summit, which was held in Paris, France, City Mayor Adana Chabebe said. Abebe Affirmed that the Addis Ababa city administration will continue to strengthen the implementation of the program as part of Next Generation Building Program. A delegation of World Health Organization comprising officials and experts from the headquarters and regional office is in Addis Ababa for a working visit. The visit aims at providing support to Ethiopia's rehabilitation efforts in regional states affected due to conflict, according to the Ministry of Health. The delegation is expected to meet with officials of sector ministries, including health, women and social affairs, as well as National Rehabilitation Commission and other pertinent actors. Welcome back. A historian says Ethiopian ancient and medieval history was characterized by Ethiopian dominance in the region and beyond. This East African nation's loss of access to sea outlet is a shocking incident that should never have happened to such a great nation, according to the historian associate professor Ayele Bekri. Shafarao Lagao has interviewed him. Take a listen to this. Historically speaking, Ethiopia used to have access to sea outlets mm -hmm. before it all of a sudden ended up being a landlocked nation. Walk me through those heydays that Ethiopia had, alternatives when it comes to sea outlets at hand, and uh, what were the historical elements then? The ancient historian Herodotus used to identify Red Sea as a part that divides Eastern Ethiopia from Western Ethiopia. Wow. So what the place called Yemen, all that used to be called Eastern Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Actually, Eastern Ethiopia extended all the way to India. All the way okay. to India. In fact, it was so vast, so it huge. It's is, is a really vast wow. uh, empire that we're talking about. In the ancient times, as well as in the medieval times, medieval times is starting from the 13th century of the Kaman era, mm. all the way to the time when uh, cities became permanent, like the building the castles of Gondor. That's an 18th century phenomena. Up to that time, 
the, the monarchy was mobile. They were moving from place to place. Okay. Even in those times, all the goods that they needed, be it material goods or strategic goods, were brought in without any kind of hindrance. Even in times of the ports being controlled by Turks, and then of course at a later period controlled by Masawa, for instance, was controlled by Egyptians, were controlled by Egyptians, mm. but still mm. the, they, were ma they managed to get access to the sea. All of a sudden Ethiopia became you know, bereft of this opportunity and it ends up being a landlocked nation in 1993. What's the main reason and who were the orchestrators and how did this go down in history from what you have observed? We, we have to remember that we have access to the sea for thousands of years. Yes. And it was actually the loss which is really a shock uh, because you know, you're so familiar with it, you're part of it, uh, your narratives uh, you know, uh, were generated from what you've done on that sea, yeah. and then and, and the route to the sea, as well as the return. And so w with all those historical events and documents and greatness, all of a sudden, when you find yourself that you no longer have access to the sea, yeah. that you are landlocked, is, 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 uh, I mean, to say the least, is very shocking. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia and China are working to bolster their long-standing bilateral relations to a higher level. The Chinese ambassador to Ethiopia, Zhao Jiyuan, briefed journalists on the overall activities of the Third Belt and Road Initiative Forum and on the successful visit of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and his delegation. Habta Mwashagwe tells you more. Ethiopia and China have built strategic cooperation over the past couple of years in various fields. Building coordinated development is a shared value of the two countries. In connection with the said Belt and Road Forum last week in China, the two countries have agreed various agreements that help us to further cement the existing strategic partnership in the near future. Briefing journalists, Chinese ambassador to Ethiopia, the Hao Daiwan underlined the major achievements of the forum. President Xi and the Prime Minister Dota B issued a joint statement between China and Ethiopia on the establishment of a weather strategic partnership. The high level exchanges and political mutual trust has been strengthened. As President Xi said, China support Ethiopia in safeguarding its sovereignty, security, and development interests. The two sides should continue to strengthen solidarity and cooperation. According to the ambassador, China appreciated Ethiopia's role to boost international trade and green development. The Chinese side highly appreciates that the Ethiopia side actively join, joins in the initiative on international trade and economic cooperation framework for digital economy and green development. During the third Belt and Road Forum, digital and green transition represents two major trends in global economic and social transformation and important drivers of economic growth with their coordinated development contributing to the economic, social, and environmental dimensions of sustainable development. China will further strengthen cooperation with Ethiopia. The OAN confirmed that Ethiopia and China are cementing comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership. Over 10,000 representatives from 151 countries have attended the forum. Both the BRF and An economist hailed Ethiopia's economic growth amidst challenging circumstances. Economic analyst Konstantinos Berihe urged Ethiopia to harness its vast agricultural potential as a catalyst to secure robust economic growth. Koshumeliso has this report. Ethiopia is grappling with internal and external challenges. At the opening of the Joint Houses, President Salot Zodi elaborated key government directions. Among this, the economic sector is at the forefront. Commenting on her speech, an economic analyst held, Ethiopia's economy is growing despite numerous challenges. The fact that the Ethiopian economy is even growing more than 5-6 percent 
is um, big, literally, because most countries don't grow more than 2 3 percent. Even developed nations like the U.S., uh, they're trying to achieve a 2 percent growth. So the fact that our government has said our growth will be more than 7 percent, although the IMF and the World Bank uh, don't agree with it, um, they, they put it probably 1 percentage less than uh, we do. But any growth, more than 5 percent is phenomenal at this time of uh, world economic instability. Constantinos urged Ethiopia to harness its vast agricultural potential to secure robust economic growth. We have important issues like climate change. Uh, the fact that we are not using our total capacity. We have huge amount of agricultural land. We export water left and right. You know, Ethiopia is called the water tower of Northeast Africa. But we're not, we're not doing this. We're not even using 20% of our agricultural land. And therefore, if there is uh, peace and security, and of course, the incentive for investment, uh, local investment and uh, foreign direct investment, then the vision of our president will be secured. Apart from the internal instability, the Russia-Ukraine war and the latest Israel-Gaza conflict will have significant impact on Ethiopia's economy, said Konstantinos. Our country is now facing very serious problems. Uh, we have the political instability coming from different regions of Ethiopia. We have the impact of the global uh, pandemic, the COVID pandemic, that is still uh, creating havoc around world economies. Uh, we have also now the Ukraine war, and lately we have the Gaza war that's coming up. These international events are going to have tremendous implication on the Ethiopian economy and, of course, the economy of African countries. IMF forecasts Ethiopia's GDP will increase by 6.1% this year and 6.2% in 2024, surpassing global and regional growth rates.